Um, well, I'm driving this lovely, well, it's 2014 Tecna version of the Nissan Leaf here, and uh, just testing this out for the week to see what the difference in the battery capacity is and such. Um, but the first thing I noticed is it's actually I looked at quick look at the registration there and found out that it's actually the leaf they used on the uh, Phoenix TV ad on Made in Tyne and Weir. It's the actual same one, but uh, which is amusing. Driving a famous leaf. Doo, doo, doo. Um, but I'll go over the, some of the difference. I think the, 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 the first difference is um, I might put in a few shots here of the cameras on this car because there's, there's one camera underneath each, each wing mirror. One on the tailgate, as is in my Leaf and the um, Accenture version of the new Leaf has, has basically the same as mine. Um, and there's also a Leaf, uh, this this Techna version has a, a camera in the nose cone. And it's all for the for, oops, for the reversing camera, which you Tesla people out there went over the moon when you got the guide lights on your reversing camera. Well. Nissan, and uh, I think this is one of the techno versions of Nissan cars, but Nissan have got an even better version where the, the cameras on the left and right and the, the rear of the car um, show exactly where you are. So you have like an above view, which I'll show you here in the clip where I'll put it. It's like an above view of uh, how you're reversing out. So you can make, um, it's just, one step up from the standard reversing camera and uh, I think it's something Tesla should think about adapting putting I know they've got a few cameras already on the car but put a couple of the wing mirrors and sides and you can have this too on that but uh, I'm going through more but now people are going to start looking at me like an idiot so idiot so I'll stop recording from the dash cam for a bit and then uh, get back to you okay just pulled over here so um yeah, it's the it's the actual leaf off the TV out on Maiden on the Maiden Tyne and Weir channel up here in the northeast. Ooh. But um a few other things I've noticed. Um of course I've mentioned the all round reversing cameras and such, but uh under the hood there's a lot more space than on mine. The actual the motor looks different and I think what they've done is there's also more room in the boot, which people know this, but I'll go over it again. The, the, there's a big panel in the back of the older leaves where the charger was behind the back seats. That's they don't have that anymore in the newer leaf. Um, it's all been moved up front. It's a it's a it's a much more compact unit in the front. And uh, if I cut in a few pictures or like few bits of video of my what what looks like under my hood or bonnet, as you say in the UK, uh, this is the older leaf, and. Um, now if we cut in some pictures of the newer leaf and you can see the difference under the under the bonnet um, the next thing I've got to do is go through the battery performance um, it does seem that I am getting more range out of this but I would expect that with it being a newer leaf anyway um, but as you can see this is the dashboard of the new leaf and you can see it has all 12 capacity bars on the right I'm, currently on the rapid charger topping up my charge for the people coming out the pubs and Morpeth and whatever tonight um, and uh, if I cut in my dashboard on my older leaf, my four or five year old leaf you can see it's down one of those capacity bars on the right and what I'll do next is I'll uh, I'll film I'll get the, the camcorder and I'll film the app uh, the the leaf spy app and I'll show you the difference between the two batteries. Oh, it's red hot. Okay, so I've got the um, this advanced uh, OBD scan tool here. I'm gonna I'm in my old leaf at the moment. I'm gonna hook it up to the app here. It's just under here. You have to put it in the old leaf. I have to remember where it is on the new leaf. But, uh, just put it under there, and uh, we'll turn on. We need to get that AC on straight away. It's like a freaking oven in here. Um, I just go through a few of the other things. Uh, the old leaves have the time here, which uh, never matched up with the time here. And I think I can show you on the new leaf how there's no time there. 
Also, there's a lot, the, the maps don't seem to update on the older leaves with the, the charge points so much. Um, Try to think what else is different here. That's about all I can think of at the moment. I'm just going to get the app going here. The Leaf Spy app and we'll check out what my battery health is like. So, Leaf Spy. Spy Pro. Right, pop that there. And we'll just see what it says. Uh, yeah, we need to touch to. Device list. Paired Bluetooth devices, yes. And it's this, the OBD2. And uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so this is the performing checks on the uh, battery status of my four year old leaf with how many miles on it now? Let's see that in the sun. 66,400 and 66, I can't see, 493. So it's not fully, it's got all bars on the charge. I don't think it is fully charged, but um, as you go through the options here, uh, you can see leaf must be moving to read pressures. Oh, it's looking for tyre pressures, which the old leaves don't have. Right, so there you go, it's updated. State of charge 89.8% so it's not fully charged. Um, right, state of health, we need to tap through here. State of health is up here. 81% of original battery. And uh, this gives you uh, what are called shunts on the battery. It's basically cells get uh, damaged while charging or discharging eventually. This changes all the time. I don't really know the complexity of it. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's there's something that uh, average hour rating or AHR that's 53.60 on this four year old leaf as well. Um, so I'm expecting when the state of health gets to 80 for the second capacity bar to go down because first capacity bar is the first 15% to 85, and then after that, it's 5% after that. So you can see how I'm uh, considering the change of either another leaf or a different vehicle for taxiing now. Right, we'll plug the, I'll get out into the um, new leaf, go somewhere nice in the countryside so all my neighbours aren't gawking at us as I record here and uh, do the check on that one. Okay, in case you're wondering where to attach your leaf spy in the newer leaf, it's down here underneath the panel that I've just pulled away there, next to that. Looks like the socket and uh, First thing I can say straight away is the AHR is 66.62, state of health is still 100, have you seen that? And look at all the red bars I've got here, still 100. So that, that's a lizard battery for you, a newer lizard battery, just do not degenerate half as fast as uh, one of them. But, uh, 20 gigs. So, if I put it down to three, probably that's 60, oh it's got six, it's not even 100%, it's got 16.3 kilowatt hours. So this is a one year old leaf with 16,000 miles on it and it's, is it, no 14,000 and it's still got, that's really annoying me, 100%, 100% state of health. Lovely. Right, let's see how many sick bags we've got left after last night. It was a filthy night. We've got one unused and behind this one, two unused. I started off with two at the beginning of the night as well, so that means no one threw up in the car last night. Isn't that wonderful? It was a filthy night last night in Morpeth, in Northumberland, so I have just been down here to the Coopies Industrial Estate Car Wash in Morpeth and cleaned the car up to give back to the boss tomorrow. Because this is uh, one of the boss's leaves. So, let's get ourselves back and we'll do some more filming. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, you see. Filthy weather last night and boiling hot today. What is going on with the weather in, in the British Isles at the moment? I know what's going on. It's all you filthy, filthy. Oh, turn that down a bit. It's all you filthy internal combustion engine people from the Stone Age chucking out all your fumes, killing the planet that's causing all this climate, severe climate measures, isn't it? All the severe changes in the weather here in Britain. Boiling up the day, thunder, monsoon rains last night. It was almost like, it's, I would call it Southeast Asia weather. Southeast Asia monsoon weather we've been having recently here. And it, uh, and I'm going to go along with Al Go and say it's all you, your horrible internal combustion engine drivers doing this, causing this uh, climate change. But um, yeah, and uh, before you start saying, well, where does the electricity come from in your car? Well, basically, even if it does all come from coal, because an electric car is so much more efficient with the energy it uses, it doesn't sit there ticking by at junctions, even even stop-start cars aren't as efficient as an electric vehicle. And uh, many have shown that even if you run this on 100% coal and gas and oil-fired elect generated electricity, you still are producing up to 75% less CO2 than you would in a conventional vehicle. So you can stick that theory up your ass as well. In the, uh, about that the uh, <laughs> the well I don't think I should be happy or unhappy it's just expected I suppose it's an older leaf with the older style battery that we're known to degenerate really fast especially in hot climates and um, yeah I mean when I first got that um, OBD thing for the leaf spy it was about a year ago and it was about 85 86 so you know, going down five to six cents in a year isn't too much. Isn't too you know after the amount of miles I've done, I must have done about in the last year 30, 30 plus thousand miles, 30, 40 thousand miles. So you know that's you know heavy rapid charging, heating the battery up quite often. Happy heavy rapid chargers, oh, stupid place to stop that one. But there. Uh, yeah, I mean, but the thing that really got me was the difference with the with this Leafs battery. It's still at a hundred percent health, and it's done fourteen thousand miles, and it's been heavily rapid charged as well in that time. I'd be keen to, I mean, if this, if I still get access to this Leaf in a, in a year or two, see how the lizard batteries degenerated in a year or two. Um, perhaps it has hasn't, and perhaps they're a lot better, which bodes well for the. Um, the new generation leaf which comes out next year or the year after because that's going to have um, double the battery capacity or I think the minimum one's going to be like a 30 kilowatt hour one from what I've heard and uh, yeah there's going to be like a 200 mile range leaf apparently that's what the rumours are which will um, put it almost on par with the Tesla Model 3 so I think Tesla are going to have some competition there unless they can make the Model 3 do similar ranges to the Model S as you got the uh, Nissan promising a, a version of the Leaf that can do 200 plus miles and you've got uh, I think you've got um, is it General Motors bringing out one that's meant to have a 200 mile range oh trust me they get stuck behind a Sunday driver and I've got someone coming up behind now so I can't record anymore Turn left here and get out of the fucking way of these bastards. 
that there's going to be this competition in the electric vehicle market it's going to make things develop a lot quicker and it's going to it's going to see the demise of the internal combustion engine a lot quicker as well which uh, we shouldn't really complain about I mean even petrol heads are saying that uh, Model S is something else like so but I think I'll I'll leave it there that'll be the end of the video um, Will I be moving to a new Leaf? I don't think so. It's still like a Model S for me. It's the ultimate electric car. And I think for business reasons, um, my Leaf might be going bye-bye. And I might be getting one of those LPG Dacia's. And it's just a matter of income. Um, I can create, if I'm using the LPG and I'm able to not have to worry about getting back to a charger, which every up to every 50 miles now with the battery degenerating it's like it's it's getting to the point where it's affecting my income and buying a new Leaf I don't think that's going to be beneficial either because I can't I've had this one for a week and it's I've not really seen the benefit of having a, a healthier battery to tell the truth electric power but um oh, I just <laughs> I, I, I mean it's just such a hoot to drive a car that has instant torque. If you've not driven an electric vehicle, you're, you're, you're denying yourself a, a grand pleasure. You just don't really understand, you know, with your gears and everything. It's, you know, you just do not understand what it's like to be able to go. And it's there. But, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you Neanderthals to stay in the past. I'm, I'm, I'm well for the future, but... Um, I'm thinking the, the immediate future for me is increase my income and the tests I've done this last couple of weeks with the LPG com com conversion compared to this has convinced me that um, I'll put it this way last last night it was a good night it was really raining it was terrible weather as I've already said and I did it about six hours and I brought in 140 which is a really good night for a leaf. Now compare that to the weekend prior to that while I was in the, when I was in the LPG vehicle. I was able to do two or three trips down to Newcastle and back. And on the Friday night I did 160 quid. And that's that's in six, seven hours. And um, on the Saturday night I did 180 pounds. Did a no I'm wrong, I've got to check my book. I actually did. Let me just check my book. I'll have to pull over here for a second because I, 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 I where did I get 160 from? Because I'm sure I did more than that. Well, it's a typical Northumberland country road. Bushes either side and nowhere to pull over. But um, up here's a little place. I just need to stop here for a second. And I'll check it because I think I tell a lie when I said 160 and 180. I'm sure it was. Let's have a look. That's why you need to keep records. Saturday the 18th. Um, Friday. Thursday. Alright, the bit of paper came off. That's why I was confused. The door pockets in that uh, Dacia. A bit of paper came off and I lost my record. But the um, the one I kept, yeah. Okay, so correction. Um, on the Friday, I did 190 pounds in the in the in the Dacia, and on the Saturday, I did 185. So, and I must have spent 
30 pound on LPG. I filled up on both days. Might not even be that, but I remember a Friday and the Saturday filling up and not bothering again after that. So you can see why I'm considering doing that for the short term gain of increasing my income. But in the long run, I'm, I will be back with an electric vehicle and uh, that is the way forward unfortunately it's just the way it's going to go and I'm pleased for it because I'm pleased to have been here at the beginning testing it all out and I'm going to still keep putting the lottery on and I'm still going to be playing best of the best I might win a Model S um, and I think at some point I'll keep, I'll keep going here yeah. and um, if I can increase my income with this uh, one that, that, that be tests have convinced me I can. I think I'm going to. Uh, oh, there's another vehicle behind. How typical. I think I'm going to uh, possibly put some money aside because I, I know uh, a place online where I can rent a Model S for a week for about 1500 quid. So I think I'm going to do that and, and I will eventually do a, a, a Tesla road trip from John O'Groats to Land's End. So that could be my next video. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Yeah, there was just one final thing I wanted to add. Um, even though this one's got like 19% more battery, um, the, you know, isn't degenerated the battery this, on this one as much as mine. To tell the truth, you're talking five, ten. I'm talking about ten miles difference. Ten, fifteen miles. So that's another reason why I'm not going for another one of these, and I'm not going for the. I'm not going to renew my battery of mine and it's just still not going to be worth it I'm still not going to be able to go out when I get on a very very busy period on a Friday and Saturday night or a bank holiday where you get a sudden mass of jobs around between 10 and 1 and you just need to keep going and going and going bringing in the door bringing in the door you just need to go 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 at that point of the week it's basically what Uber calls the um, Yeah, the Uber surge, where the Uber prices go up when it, because taxis are in such high demand. Well, yeah, I just you just can't do that in an electric vehicle. You just can't keep going for three hours unless it's all short door-to-door -door stuff. Uh, with Phoenix, you don't get you do get a lot of that, but you do get the long runs, and it's them that are the money makers. And if you deny yourself the ability to do them. Because you're driving an electric vehicle, you can only do one, then you've got two or three, then you've got to charge. If you can't like do three or four of them in a row, you won't be bringing in the, uh, the £200 for six hours work money, will you? So, um, yeah, that's another reason why I'm not going for another one of these. But still, I believe electric vehicles are the future and uh, get on board now. If you can plan your trips, your commuting to work and everything, and you know exactly where you're going before you set off there's no reason why you shouldn't be driving one think with your brain not with your heart and you will save money and the thing is once you've thought with your brain and took out the electric vehicle your heart will be won over as well because you realize how nice they are to drive and how much money you're saving driving them okay that's the end this time